It may be meant for the wilderness, but how does it do on the road? I'm Steph. I'm Jay. And this is Modern Motoring. Here we are today in the 2024 Subaru Outback Wilderness. And it's not that the Outback Wilderness itself is new, but it's new to Jay and I. We've never reviewed this car together before. Mm. So here we are. And the only major change for 2024 is a redesign on the front bumper to give it a little bit of a tougher, more muscular look. But other than that, it can carry as on unchanged. What a waste of money. Eh. Like at least do a little more, but <laughs> there's research, development, design, engineering, mm. and making it a part and remaking it a part. Mm. But also it's only two years since it launched, and so I'm sure that there's a refresh coming before very long. I know, like I would just let them do the whole refresh in 25 right. or 26. Anyways, it's here and I'm gonna take a passenger seat, because I'm in a passenger seat, mm. roll on this because somebody went hundreds and a thousand kilometers? Well, so did you. Yeah, yeah, we did it together. We were road warriors in this thing this week. So you drove us to Detroit and back. And then you... And then I dropped you off. <laughs> you dropped you off, actually. <laughs> and then I continued on to south of Montreal. We can tell you all about the 700 pound roof capacity and when it's static, 220 pounds when it's in motion. We can tell you all about the 24.1 centimeter ground clearance. It's pretty impressive. Yes, the extra tow hooks, or not tow hooks, tie hooks. Leave yeah, that in if you want. Yeah, yeah. and, <laughs> and the yellow stuff and the rugged tires and yeah. the different types of rims. So made for the outdoors, people pull through the pandemic and now that we're done with it, but it's not as strong as it was. I thought people would kind of give up on it because people were buying kayaks and bikes and all this outdoor stuff and then mm -hmm. you know a couple of years later it's on uh people use craigslist or facebook marketplace yeah Mar all of Mar the things they bought because they were bored are being resold but <laughs> the auto industry is a little different mazda yeah. cx50 um what's their fancy off-road edition the apex the meridian meridian sorry um uh, rav4 has their trail edition and mm -hmm. ever uh, uh kia's got the um x-line export yeah. x-line I should be better at knowing my brands, but the outdoor stuff is here to stay. Outdoor trims and packages are very trendy, but mm. the Subaru stuff here is the real deal. This is yeah. not appearance stuff. This actually changes and improves the outdoor functionality of the vehicle. But you also need to be able to live with it day to day. So here's right. where we're going to tell you what it's like when you have big, long highway runs to do in this thing and um, how it does on fuel, how it does on comfort and drivability and all that kind of stuff. We're a little over 2,000 kilometers in total between Mississauga and Detroit and then Mississauga and the Eastern Townships in mm -hmm. Quebec. So you go first because you did uh, a lot more driving. What's the most important thing people are thinking of, I suppose, when they're thinking about doing this kind of driving in this car? That's going to be fuel. Yeah. Because you are spending more on fuel to choose this Outback over the other one. It's kind of a box to begin with. And then you add all the extra... The weight and weight the and, bits. And yeah. So in liters per 100 kilometers, it's 11 on city streets, 9 on the highway. And it should be 10 for the combined mm. because the difference between 9 and 11 is 10. But Natural Resources Canada says 10.1. Yeah. Uh, that's because they don't do a 50-50 split when they factor in combined driving between city and highway. Well, I think it's a different should. percentage. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> We're at 9.2, again, over 2,100 kilometers, uh, soon to be 2,200 kilometers. I'll say this is a rare instance where I'm driving a Subaru and I don't find that the fuel figures are a fair bit off what I was expecting. Mm. This is pretty close for the type of driving that we were doing versus what the estimates are, and that's good to see. Even though 9.2 feels like a lot, you're not buying this without knowing that you're trading off things like burning more fuel, right? Yeah. Between the Outback Wilderness, Forester Wilderness, and the Crosstrek Wilderness, not here yet, but it's coming, uh, soft tech seats, because you can go get muddy and dirty and you don't have to worry about staining your cloth seats. You've been in that seat quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Zero issues. Really? Yeah, I actually oh, wow. find them really comfortable. Just the right balance between squishy and supportive. Interesting. And I like, I have to say, the upholstery. You know that I'm sometimes a bit of a messy snacker <laughs> on road trips. I wasn't there for no. that, so if I didn't see it, it didn't happen. Well, yeah, but you didn't see the leftovers either because <laughs> it cleaned up really nicely. <laughs> Um, now, the infotainment system, I don't like it. I don't like anything to do with Subaru's new nonsense system. How did you find it? Okay. Um, sometimes it has trouble connecting my phone wirelessly to access CarPlay. It's a little slow. It is a little slow, more than a little slow at times. And I don't love 
how CarPlay ends up in a vertical alignment with the map at the top and everything else at the bottom. The further something is as a function from your eye, eye line with the road on the screen, like the further down it is, yeah. the more your eyes are coming off the road to access it. And a lot of the important stuff is toward the bottom of the screen here. So that part's not great. I do like that it's a very simple tile layout. Mm -hmm. It's pretty natural. Um, works a lot like a, like a phone does. Same as last year and the year before, it's a 2.4 liter uh, four cylinder turbo and it's a Boxer engine, 260 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque. And it has a CVT. Right. Mm -hmm. This in Canada is the entry point to that upgrade engine. Anything lower than this is the 2.5 liter at a fair bit less power. It's in the high ones, which mm. is a far cry from being in the mid twos. I don't think I would want much less power than this. So from that perspective, mm. I like the Wilderness because it offers that entry point to this engine, mm -hmm. as well as a whole bunch of equipment, really the important stuff. Yeah. Plus this extra capability. And if you don't need that extra capability, you can look at, to, at the Premier or the Touring trims. Something I know we both noticed mm. when we were accelerating at highway driving, and this is sort of going from maybe two to 3,000 RPM. Mm -hmm. There's a stutter that oh, appears. Oh, right, that was yeah. a Detroit truck that we noticed a lot. Yeah, and I, it, it didn't go away. And so uh, that was enough to make me go digging into forums to see if oh, really? other, if owners had any idea what's going on. Because it's not something that's talked about a lot as being an issue. And the forums don't seem to have a solid grasp on exactly what the problem is either. Oh. The best guess is it's a different CVT that goes with this engine. It's, it's designed to handle the higher torque from this engine. Uh, and it, it seems that as though maybe that CVT, there, there's a bit of a skip in it when it gets to that range in RPM. I wouldn't even call it concerning from a sensation standpoint. You notice it, but it's not as though you go, oh my gosh, what's, you know, this car yeah. has got a lot of problems. And one other compromise we should bring up that we noticed during our driving this week. And this is, you know, if you're shopping for this car, you're expecting this one. Mm. You can't get a car with 24 centimeters of ground clearance <laughs> and expect that it's gonna be able to keep itself composed perfectly when you're going through a highway curve and you hit yeah. a bump, right? It takes some time to settle down. Mm -hmm. Completely normal and expected for this type of vehicle and with this type of equipment. So if you're looking at this, you're probably also taking a look at the Mazda CX-50. Specifically the Meridian. Uh, trim. You also have to a kind of the same degree, the Honda Passport, mm -hmm. which is kind of forgotten about. Yeah. On the pricing side, it is a 44,795. You throw in your uh, freight PDI and all that for 2195. Your as Testa comes out to 47,372. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Um, mm. We're going to go back to the CX50 because that's the closest one. It's in and around that. Mm -hmm. Now, I did that big East Kootenays thing on the CX50 last summer and it handled logging roads mm -hmm. and dirt roads and gravel roads extremely well. Now, I know we said we haven't taken this in similar conditions, but we've put, I feel, lots and lots of mileage on it. Again, mm -hmm. Almost 2,200. And we know the Subaru is capable of it. Yeah, for it sure. It can pretty much do almost any kind of mild to low medium off-roading just mm -hmm. based off the height so i know I, I don't know if i could pick one specifically mm. um, i guess the way i break it down is i really like where the wilderness sits in the outback lineup mm -hmm. it's a really smart entry point to that upgraded engine all right the extra capability that you get for a reasonable price is good and if you're really gonna use that, then don't hesitate, right? If you are gonna put a rooftop tent on this thing and go camping and, and go into the back roads, go for it. One miss I forgot to mention when we were talking about the infotainment. Mm. The Outback comes with what three words capability, but only if you have the nav, the onboard nav installed. Oh really? And this doesn't come with it. And oh. that's a huge miss to me because this is a car where you might actually need it. That said. I think the closest I can come to comparing the CX-50 with this, just to wrap that up, is all the Subarus I've had in winter in the past three, four years, no slips, no slides, mm -hmm. like that all-wheel drive works absolutely perfectly. Mm -hmm. And again, I know it's not the same with British Columbia logging roads to snow, but it's the sure-footedness and it's just that added sense of, not security, but just that extra little bit of layer of comfort. I've got a real soft spot for this car. 
and I think that it's a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. I wish I had an excuse for owning one, mm -hmm. but you have to understand that even if you do have an excuse for owning one, you're making some trade-offs. I don't think yeah. that's a secret or any, a surprise to anyone. Just make sure that you're you're balancing that properly before you decide if you want to buy it, because you do have alternatives in the other Outbacks and the CX-50. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't already, please hit that little button. Can you point at the button? I can't. I'm driving. Point at the button. Just uh, point it where there. Is it? There. It's down. There you go. <laughs> Left or the right? It's down there. And if you hit it, you'll subscribe so you don't miss any more of our videos. And that would be great because we love hearing from you. Please keep up with us, watch us, leave us your thoughts, your comments. Find us on all the major social media platforms because we're there too. And thanks for watching.